775 just picking up the end of day one on an installation of a Solark in the Ozarks so we have done a lot today been a very productive day we've got our conduits in from our ground mount to the house we've had a little prepper base camp here under this building for all our tools which has been awesome <laughs> yes yes and uh, we were able to get the power peak installed holes dug conduits run posts in leveled concrete ready to build tomorrow so I don't think we've ever done that we the weather cooperated and everything just fell into place nice so this is ready to go we were gonna get the truck tomorrow morning so we're I feel like I'm a day ahead so that is awesome and the posts look good we're ready to build all of our struts and aluminum rails are over there and the panels await us on the, uh, the trailer. The cool thing is I was able to pick up a little mini Yanmar. It's a VIO 25. Um, I have the 35 and they had this at the rental agency. I said, oh, I'm very familiar with this. Let me rent it. So that was helpful. Great little machine, but it's had plenty of power to do what we've needed it to do. And uh, we had to go get around all this infrastructure, propane and water lines, but we still, we still managed to hit, oh, never fails, hit something. So there's two wells on the property and uh, homeowner didn't quite know where the connection was of the other well. Well, you know how it goes. I found it and I will fix that first thing in the morning. Need to get some more plumbing, but yeah, we cleared all the utilities, but of course, had to hit something. Thankfully, didn't break the wire, but uh, got to fix that tomorrow. And then we will get, we are, this is where we're running our solar to, so we went all the way around. Solar's over there, we went around the buildings to try to avoid everything, but I still clipped that water line. Disconnect coming in here, that's where our solar's going in. We're going to be replacing a lot of this. We're going to be getting rid of this box, putting a Reliance transfer switch, and adding a Reliance transfer switch to the end of this. You'll see tomorrow. Hopefully we'll make good progress working with the generator. And then in the garage where the inverter is going, and the best of country music. So I'll go through this. All right, battery bank is in. Well, Drills are running away. <laughs> and this will be our wiring trough setup with a bypass. Solark is going to go here. Our battery disconnect is here. We are going to actually use the existing transfer switch that was here um, in the bypass. We're going, to, we're going to do some tricks here to allow the customer to have power everywhere in the house, even though he has many 200 amp tr switches. We're day two here, Solark in the Ozarks. Johnny's just a boogie in. We're putting the Solark in, the gutters in, and uh, getting everything built today, roughed out. And uh, got an electrician on the job. We'll show you what he's up to. We're, uh, again, putting the Solark 8K. It is upside down as we prep it. And uh, I'll go outside because he's about to make lots of noise. Hey, folks, I'm on the outside here with Chance McKisson from Arkansas. He is... Uh, from AC Electric. He is a generator expert in the area. He'll travel most of the state. I think he's a Generac dealer and he's helping us out tremendously today because we're putting in uh, generator type transfer switches for the Solark and so we're pulling a lot of these. He's taking out all the ugly and cleaning it up nicely so we appreciate Chance doing that work for us today. So we do a, we do a lot of these jobs. And if you're wanting to do one of these, if you all you really need is an electrician locally, like Chance, to do it, and we can send you all the materials and walk you through it. But if you're able to, you know, hire a local electrician, because in this state you got to be a licensed electrician in Arkansas to do to do this job to work with a power company, and so we get the homeowner just to hire an electrician, like Mr. Chance, and then this is a fairly simple job if you want to tackle it and with his help of course. Alright so we're putting in these Reliance 200 amp transfer switches 
They got a 50 amp breaker. So our generator is the Solark that we're going to connect here. And we're going to put another one here. This is going to enable the customer to have power everywhere in the house. Of course, he can't run everything, but he'll be able to manage his loads with, uh, you know, turning off some of the breakers. There will be a dedicated panel in the garage. I'll show you that, but it's too noisy in there right now. So there'll be a dedicated panel in there that'll always be on the Solark. But we wanted to give him the flexibility to not only feed these with the Solark, to feed the whole house because he's got two other 200 amp panels in this house, but to also fire up the little Generac and you can do the same and send power to every place in the house. Just gives them a lot of flexibility. And uh, so we're, again, finding a local electrician is kind of key to doing these long distance jobs. We're, we're a considerable distance from our home base. So getting an electrician is, is very important. Little Yamar has been great. This is a VIO 35 is the next size down from the one I have. It didn't have a thumb. The thumb's always uh, a nice thing to have once you start using one. You get so used to it, especially like we ran into a lot of roots. It's just nice to be able to pick stuff out and throw it off to the side. But uh, great little machine. All the controls are identical to mine. It's a little, a couple of things were a little bit different, but um, for the most part, it's the same exact thing. So the rental agency had just uh, started carrying the Yanmar, which gives a four-year warranty versus the Kubota. And then they were like, a lot of people are coming in and saying they want the Yanmar because it's a little bit stronger than the Kubota Mini X. So I've heard that from several people running them head to head. So anyway, very glad to have the same machine on the job here. I just didn't want to tow mine for 12 hours. So been very helpful we got a lot of rain to let things dry out tomorrow we'll do the finish touch up and grading but again having a thumb if you're going to get one you want a thumb you want to mess around without a thumb you got to be able to clean up quickly go yanmar looking at the ground mount we were very fortunate i got a huge rain last night we were able to get that concrete truck in yesterday thankfully so these were all set and ready to go so the the gents are building the power peak and a lot of time was spent on getting these posts right so they're coming out really nice if you I can't say it enough if you take the time to set these up right you don't have to do a lot of adjusting if any all right this is kind of a day two wrap up on this Solark in the Ozarks and we're uh, just got finished mounting the panels on the power peak ground mount Abraham is dressing up the cutoffs. We've got to cut these. Uh, we just run them a little bit long, just cut everything. And it makes it really nice and neat. And then we will wire it up tomorrow. Pull our, it rains so much, we've kind of stayed away from this mud today. But we'll pull our solar in. Pull that in tomorrow. Let me show the electrical. Nice to have a little prepper camp here. Been uh, having some really good lunches. To go to lunch at this location would take us three hours. It would waste three hours. So we've had fun just staging our tools and our food and having lunches in our little prepper camp. All right, the electrician was really helpful. Again, Chance from AC Electric here in Arkansas. He uh, does generators, all sorts of things. He said he doesn't much, not much he doesn't do. So these are the Reliance transfer switches, all completed and landed. The Solark hits this breaker. We'll probably do some labeling here to show. But I really like these. These are a, a good choice. Mr. Valentine picked these. These are, um, they were cheaper than any other solution and uh, nice and clean as well. So let's see what we did on the inside. How far did we get? And here we're back on, panels back on. We're using the existing transfer switch. And then we put in a bypass, which it's in bypass right now. And Solark will, this lever will be lifted up. But everything's kind of mounted. We're working on the, excuse me for a second here. Got a lot of obstacles here. And uh, we'll be running, hooking up the battery tomorrow morning. And uh, we'll be firing up the Solark tomorrow. So we're... This is about the fastest one we've ever done, weather permitting. It's been two days into it, 
and we'll be able to do some testing. We got a water heater work to do with a smart load feature on the Solark. Basically that diversion load controller. And there's a couple other circuits in the end of the house that they want to run into this critical loads panel, which is always on the Solark and battery based system. Amount of the disconnect for the battery on the uh, Gladiator rack. And this is a really good move, folks, if you're doing this yourself. You can get these Gladiator racks at Home Depot or Lowe's. And for what it is, and yes, you can build your own battery rack, but look how that's pretty nice for $150. You're not going to build one cheaper or stronger. It's 2,000 pounds per shelf capacity, so pretty awesome. All right. We'll be back to uh, show you how it's running. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get it up and running and do some testing. Just wrapping up day three, Solark and the Ozarks. Been a real good job. Enjoyed it. It's been fun. Good team. And uh, so three days we're able to completely build and power this system with 11.2 kilowatts generator hooked up we have five transfer switches in the system giving the customer the ability to run power everywhere so five transfer switches but pretty happy with how the array came out these are the Axitec 120 cell panels with split J boxes triple black black frame black panel black back sheet real nice starting to get some shade now but it's uh, it's, well, it's after 7 o'clock back home. That end of the array is still getting it, still making power. We're charging the batteries now. All right. Didn't film much today. We were just really pushing to get this job done in three days. So I think we were able to do a solar arc. Now we have a lot of other things to work on, like well pumps and all that, but... We got the array built, we're powering the Solark now. And uh, pulled our wires in about an hour ago. So it's like six o'clock now, I think. Or is it after? Oh yeah, six o'clock central time. So uh, just wanted to show you what we did on the back. Pretty simple with the Solark because there's no optimizers or electronics out here. These are uh, the Axitec new panels with split J boxes. They're actually 120 cell modules. They're 310 watt, triple blacks. And uh, I think it turned out real nice. We've got, uh, they started labeling these. So you know we're using the right equipment. PV Array DC Isolator from IMO. Gonna see those gentlemen, IMO, at the uh, SPI show coming up in Utah. Looking forward to that. Solar Power International is always fun. Catch up with some folks and fellow installers and and learn and just see what a, see all the latest greatest equipment that's out there. So tomorrow we'll pump. But for now, we got the solar turned on, finished our cleanup grading, clean the mess up and the weather behaved. So uh, let me show you the solar arc. Okay, we're in the garage or the mech room, and uh, another Solar Solark is up and running. Solark in the Ozarks, up and running. We're not done yet. We'll do some testing tomorrow. Oh, day three was another successful day, and uh, we are going to finish it tomorrow. And we'll go over and we'll show you. There are five transfer switches in this system, right, boss? Five. And then now transfer. Just keep keep adding transfer switches. We just love levers. Ever since we went to Vegas. Okay, we're back. It's the last day. We're cleaning up and we're testing the Solark and the Ozarks. And as you can tell, we got a pretty pretty nice day for testing with some clouds, intermittent clouds, but it's doing really well. We've been running uh, well pumps and trying to Start some heavier loads, managing breakers. Um, the critical loads panel is fine. Everything's good in there. It can run all the time. We're just testing to see in a grid down scenario what we could run here at this house and explain to the homeowner how he can have a lot of flexibility to put power everywhere. Just 
be careful what loads he tries to run. As we found out, his water furnace pulls 150 amps, so that's not going to work. But uh, everything else in the house seems to work just fine. And he's got the generator as a backup as well. When that, we gave, we opened up the capability of that to send power everywhere too. So we're just cleaning up, and uh, time to head on back. And we'll probably crash out tonight and hit the road. 12, 12, 13 hour trip. So we do cover a lot of range, but uh, this is probably the farthest that we've been able to, to go with the whole team. So it's been good. We effectively got it done in three days. And uh, today is just making sure before we leave that everything is right and everything is double checked. Everything's torqued down and uh, make sure everything's working well. So we're good. So it really came out well, happy with it. We'll see you on the next job, folks. I think we're heading to Alabama next. Then maybe Tennessee, Michigan, back to South Carolina, a couple jobs in Georgia. That should about round out the, the year. We got a surprise at the end of the year. We're gonna have fun with, I hope. I'll stay tuned for that. That's installation, that's an off-grid, that'll be a lot of fun. All right, I think everything's cleaned up. And not too much damage done, whatever damage should be coming back in grass pretty soon. Just finishing up on the last day, a little Solark testing here. We're testing loads in the house, and uh, there's one that just came on. And that's kind of our baseline, it's like 1600 watts. Just jumped up to four a little while ago. So, this is the system all wrapped up. Got our DC disconnect. Put a cover on here so nobody can mess with the battery terminals in this garage or drop anything up against them. And uh, this was existing an ex existing Generac Guardian transfer switch. And uh, there are one, two, three, four, five transfer switches in this system. Fourth is here. I like these. I like these Reliance. We haven't used these before. This interlock is pretty awesome. 